And when the standby comes on, check it's got power and goes through its self test. And at night time adjusted brightness level, get the illumination where you want it. Both batteries on, volts are good at a bit over 24. Beta 2 on, AC power is up, volts are at 115. And then number one inverter on and watching for a small flick, number one takes over. Non essential to manual. Down to a fire, press to test. One, two lights, baggage compartment test. Across engine out lights are working. Cross to the over torque, press to test 105 on both. Looks good, must caution reset. Stick centering, cyclic centering light. Bulb is working. I set to FL elevation on the altimeter. 1010. Going to 1013 pressure altitude for the engine assurance. Power assurance, I'll have 170 feet. Back to FL elevation. Okay, red out. Set for 450 BFR and test cycle. 100 feet off legs on and release. Off, 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 off. Lights tested. All working, heading bug set, core set, GPS. So I'm looking at number one. I got half scale deflection and half up. And over here for GPS number two, and on that side half scale deflection and half up. H toss test okay. H tours tested fine. Okay, a data computer. I'll set my outbound altitude fifteen hundred. Okay, check, check, check. Condition is good, good. Uh, fuel, digits test, they're all working. Ford tank, I have 180 pounds, and in the mid tank, 200 pounds is good. All good, volts are good for a start. AC volts are tested. Portion panel tested, it's working. All lights tested, none not working, and resetting. Cross to my collective head, all switches are off. Beeping down for seven seconds. Throttle friction, both off. Both throttles fully open. Back to the detent, and then idle release one and two. Both back to idle. Across to the fuel panel. Okay, so transfer tanks both coming on. Booth pumps both coming on, and when I put the fuel valves on, I get fuel pressure on both. Fuel pressure on both engines, up to the rotor brake, coming on and looking for rotor brake lights, all the way on, tested, off, and rotor brake lights. Okay, I'm ready to start, 24th, all clear, I'm starting engine 1, I'll be looking at N1, ITT, and all pressures. Alright, roll, ready to start on engine 1, in the start position. At 12%, throttle fully open. Back to the detent, engine one and just below idle. ITT's increasing all pressures up, blades turning. Watching for 55%. At 55, starter off, collective to the floor. ITT peak just under 700, all pressures good. Good start on engine one. I'm just past the idle detent now, back it off and make sure the idle stop is working. It is. Engine 1 idling at about 61%. The throttle now, I'm winding it up slowly, bringing my N1. Once I'm past 72%, up to generator 1. Generator 1 is coming on. I've got 200 amps and reducing now below 150. Continue winding the N1 up to around about 81 to 82 percent. I'll set it about there and friction coming on on throttle one, and that'll stabilise the that'll stabilise the N2 in the uh, at just at about 80 percent outside of the avoid range. That's all good for a start on engine one uh, up at 81 percent. T's and P's all green. Okay. Now, generator loads at 100 on the good engine, or the engine that's running. I'm ready to start engine 2. Throttle 2, start number 2. Number 2, watching the N1, there's 12%. Throttle fully open. 
all the way back to the idle and then release just crack it below the idle watching the N1 ITT and oil pressures increasing RPMs increasing there's 55% now starter off there's past the idle detent and backing it off everything looking good idling at 62% winding up as I get past 72% up for generator 2 and watching over here generator 2 not on I'll just hit reset and on there they are both generators on both lights out and load sharing nicely and I'll wind it to about 72% now on engine 2, throttle friction on, friction off on the good engine, or engine 1, and I'll bring engine 1 back to about 72% as well. I'll just bring number 2 back, at least increased a little bit with that load. So that'll get me nicely sitting at about 80% outside the void, a void range on uh, the N2. Both frictions on there, so around the 72% mark. So running through the uh, systems checklist now, we'll do the force trim off first, identified, force trim off, and the force trim light comes on. With the force trim off, cyclic centering. So I'm moving the cyclic, there's the forward light, aft. There's the aft light, back to the middle, now left. And right. That's all good, force trim identified, back on. Hydraulic interlock check, next. So here's hydraulics one. When I switch it off, it'll drop to zero here, and we'll get a hydraulic caution light. So off, zero, hydraulic caution light on number one, master caution off. Identify hydraulics two. When I turn it off, because of the interlock, nothing should happen. I turn it off, correct, nothing's happened. Hydraulic two has stayed on. While they're both off, if I switch number one back on, we should see them flip over. There they go, they flip over. Now the hydraulic two is off with the master caution, I can reset. And now I'm testing the other interlock. When I turn number one off, nothing should happen. Off, nothing's happened, so that's working fine. Number one back on, and number two back on, both hydraulic lights out, both hydraulic pressures are normal. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that my throttle is at idle, so friction off on number one. Number one all the way back to idle, confirming it's at idle. Number one is at 60% and idling. Identify the number one governor switch to manual, it's a lift and throw. When I throw it into manual, the N1 will wind off. I have to wind the throttle up and catch it and don't let it flame out. And then I'm looking for an increase in N1 in response to an increase in throttle. So confirming I'm at idle on number one. I have the number one manual governor switch. There it is. The N1 dropped a little bit and my throttle is winding. It got back to 55. Throttle's coming up and it shows I'm in manual governor on number one. Master caution reset. I'm increasing the throttle and I'm getting a response to the N1. It's increasing. I only need to go up to about to about there, I don't need to go all the way. Now I'm gonna cut the throttle back to back to idle, but it'll go, and I need to get back into governor auto before it flames out. So coming back to idle now, and back into auto, lights out. Okay, friction's coming on. Now the number two, throttle's coming back to idle. Confirming on number two, I'm back at idle. Identifying the number two governor switch. Into manual, master caution reset, number two's in manual. Winding up, I'm getting an increase on the throttle. That's good enough. Identify the number two, back to idle, back into auto, lights out. Now I'm gonna get out of the avoid range. I'm winding back up to 72% on number one and 72% on number two. That'll get us back to about 80 then N2, friction's on, 73%, that'll be nice. And we're out of the avoid range. I'm gonna do the electrical fuel testing. So we're gonna test bus one first, so I hold that in the bus one position, go to the boost pump switch, and when I turn it off, the boost pump fuel pressure here on number one will drop back to zero, but because cross feed is in normal, 
and the other boost pump is operating, the pressure will recover instantly. So selecting off, and it recovers. Back on. Now I'm testing the interconnect switch, and each time I move it, a caution light should come on to indicate it's in transit. One, two, three. That's done. Now release the test bus and hold in test two position, and I go to the other boost pump, looking on engine two when I do that. Off and recovers back on and then the same thing with the interconnect the caution light is coming on each time indicating it's in transit because we have an auxiliary fuel tank we leave it in the open position release the bus switch now I'm going to test with the boost pumps off and the crossfeed so cross feeds coming closed when I turn engine one boost pump off now the fuel pressure should drop to zero and stay there and the engine will continue to run if the engine driven fuel pumps working correctly. It is. I should leave that there for about one minute. Same thing on engine two. Off, and the engine driven fuel pumps keeping it running. Happy with that? Boost pumps back on, fuel pressure increases, and then cross feed back to the normal position. Now we're ready to wind up the throttles. Okay, throttle friction is coming off now, and I'm winding number one throttle up. We're going to go fully up to uh, full throttle, and on the N1, so on the N2 for engine number one, we should get 95% plus or minus 1% because we fully beep down before engine start. My throttle's coming fully open, and I'm looking at the N2, and I've got right on 95% friction on. Now the uh, throttle for number two coming forward. And with both, throttle, with both throttles fully open, we should have 97 plus or minus 1%. Both throttles are fully open and friction on now, and I've got just over 96%, so it's within limits. Now I can beep up using the RPM increase. And for CAT AOPS and the rigging on this machine, it should be able, we should be able to get close to 103%. So I'm blipping. Increasing the RPM, that's going past 98, 99, there's 100, 101, 102, just a bit over 102, so happy to accept that, and uh, we'll use that for any Cat A work we do, deeping back now to 100% for normal ops. There's my uh, NR now set at 100%. All right, now we do the 100% hydraulic, hydraulic checks. Frictions are on, 100% set. Identifying force trim is coming off. Force trim light is on. Hydraulics number one, I've identified that. Off, lights on, master caution resetting. Hydraulics have dropped to zero. Now I should have stiff pedals. I'm testing, yes, the pedals are stiff, but I can still move them. But I've got normal hydraulics on cyclic and collective, happy with that. Identify hydraulics one, back on, lights out. Identifying hydraulics two, off. Hydraulic two caution light, master caution resetting. Now my pedals have got hydraulics, so they're nice and free and easy. Same with the cyclic, little diagonal mov movements. Same with the collective. Happy with the hydraulics, identified number two, back on. Remember, turn the force trim off, otherwise the autopilot test won't work. I'm ready for an autopilot test at 100%. So I hit the test button, and when I do that, it'll start the sequence. We'll get level one testing showing up on the air data computer, and the AP1 light will start flashing when it's ready. When it flashes, I press it to start the test. The actuator's up here. Number one system actuator, you can see as the cyclic starts to move, the actuators are moving, and I press the number two system to make sure they're not working. Number one's been tested fine, now number two is ready to test, I'll press that when it's flashing, and I have to hold the system two actuator down to see the actuators moving. There they are, and release to make sure number ones aren't moving, that is correct. The test is complete, it's at the end with no errors. So I hit the test button here, then I can turn the autopilots on, one and two, and go into SAS mode on the ground. If you're extended period on the ground, uh, and avoid having it in attitude mode. As part of the autopilot testing, then we come to the AHARs, these two here. 
both buttons simultaneously and I'll find my one, two, three off flags, 45 degrees angle of bank and 5 degrees nose up with a heading of 015 on both sides. Release, they'll all cover, reset the master caution. Okay, so now I'm ready for power assurance. We're going to do engine one first, so I go to engine number two on the throttle, friction off, bring the throttle back to idle, throttle friction back on. Number two is back at idle, number one, the NR we're testing is uh, around 97%, it should bleed to that as I bring the torque in, to 55 torque. We'll get light on the skids, so collectors coming in, number one engine torque now is up, there's 50, continuing to 55. We're getting very light on the skids and I just want to beat down a little bit for 97 NR. Okay, let everything stabilise there, it's 55 torque, 97 NR. My N1 is 98.2 and the ITT is 755. 98.2, When I'm happy with that, reduce power. Back to flat pitch. Okay. Throttle friction off now. Number two engines coming up to full throttle. Winding it open. Number two throttles fully open. Friction's coming on. Number one throttle friction's off. Number one's coming back to idle and friction on. Number one's now at idle and I'm ready to power test the second engine. Here's the engine torque as the collective comes in. And I've got uh, 97, 98, just 97 NR. Power's coming through 50, ITT's within limits. There's 55 torque on number two at 97 NR. This time we have an N1 of 98.6 and an ITT of 760. So it was 98.2 to 98.6, 755 to 760. Stabilising. Happy with that. Flat pitch again. Then when you're ready to shut down, both generators off, both battery switches on, non-essential to manual. The idle stop on both engines, one, two, and both to idle, both engines out, N1 and ITT decreasing. Okay, as we pass through 10% N1 on the way down, fuel valves off, uh, boost pumps and transfer pumps off. Come up now, standby uh, AI off, and inverters can come off, position light off, and I'm just going to keep the batteries on so I don't lose intercom and audio. Below 40% rotor RPM, we can use the rotor brake. Apply the rotor brake, don't apply it until it's, like, take it off just before it stops and let it stop the last bit on its own. The blade's about to stop. Last thing is, we release tension on the elastomerics and the flex head, just raise the collective to about there and then power off.